Hello, my name is Skyler. I work in the All Fill Service Department, and today we're going to go over two model VF100Es. Uh, this one is our standard VF100E, where this one has a cascade pan. I'm going to go through how to set up recipes, how to, to set up your machine from uncrating. It's pretty simple, so let's dive right in. Uh, first thing you're going to notice is you're going to get a uh, wire tied um, foot switch. This is to initiate the filler to dump. And then you're also going to get a standard 110 volt uh, cord coming out of the bottom of the cabinet. They should already have plugs on them since these are our standard equipment. Um, from there, we're going to get a alarm that says no control power. That just simply means that we are not sending voltage to, to anything right now. Uh, to get out of these states, I'm just going to twist and pull the e-stop and you can see it says system ready, press start. But before I start, I want to make sure that the machine is mechanically set up. So let's go into that. Um, we have a gate up top on the hopper. This controls the flow of product onto the vibratory pan. Uh, what you're looking for is a nice even layer of product to get better accuracy. So the lower the, the gate is, the better accuracy you're going to get. The higher the gate is, the more flow you're going to get. It's all about finding a balance of the machine, and we'll do that through setting up in the HMI. Uh, before we start, I'm going to take the uh, bucket off and I'm just going to pull up and out. It sets on a couple hooks right here. And we just want to make sure that this armature is set to six o'clock, pointing straight down. So it already is. As you can see, I can't move it. But if I push in the e-stop, I can move it. So just make sure it's at six o'clock. Pull out the e-stop and I can't move it. Okay, so putting the bucket on, uh, back on is very simple. You just push it back and then down. Now the bucket's attached to the machine and we're able to run. Okay, so now we're just gonna go through the screens. On the main screen here, you see we have the start button, the stop button, the message board up top, as well as a screen number in the top left corner. We also have first and second, and then this red number here, in this case it's red because it's zero, um, this, but this right here is what is live in the scale. Um, and then this is the last weight. Single cycle is the same as hitting the foot switch. So it initiates the machine. Then um, we also have down here the select button where you can select a number of recipes. On the VF100E, you have up to 50 different recipes you can run on the machine. So you can either enter which recipe you're going for or you can toggle through them to a selected number. I'm going to go back to number one and hit enter. We also have languages where you can have it in Spanish or in English. Um, we can also clear our statistics down here with clear stats. Uh, back into the main menu and I can go into setup and then set up uh, target weight. In here we have our product name. So we can just have our product name be whatever we would like it to be. In this case, I'm just gonna use test and hit enter. Uh, our target weight, which uh, there's no reference to units at all. It's just what you calibrate to. So in this case, I'm gonna do 10 and that's gonna be 10 grams of product. We have our tolerance weight, which then shows you below what your low limit is and your high limit. And then preact. Preact is a, uh, the only way we will get an underweight is if your preact is set too high. What preact means is pre-actual weight. So as we're filling into the bucket from the vibratory pan, uh, product is still going to be in transition, still flowing when we hit a target weight. So what we're gonna do is set preact to zero, run about five containers, and then if we can't get the weight completely dialed in, whatever we're consistently overweight at, is what we'll set as our preact number. Hitting back, I'm going to go into setup vibration. On this screen, you see that we have a bulk percent of target weight, and we are a bulk and dribble fill. So we're going to be doing a bulk fill at our bulk vibration rate. And then once we reach 90% in this case of our bulk fill, the remaining 10% we're going to do at a dribble 
vibration rate. So we're gonna slow down the vibration so that we can trickle product in and get the most accuracy. We also have our minimum fill time. In this case, it's set to a half second. So if for whatever reason, um, if we were to fill faster than this setting at, five, at uh, a half second, we would alarm saying minimum fill time. And if we took longer than 32 seconds, we would alarm and say maximum fill time. Now, if I wanted to get rid of the maximum fill time alarm because 32 seconds is not, uh, or is not long enough for me to reach my target weight, I can set this to zero. So this would get rid of uh, any issues of um, in-feed systems. If you're manually filling your hopper and you're trying to run out, you would be able to truly run out your hopper here. Um, I'm just gonna set that back to 32 seconds. Then we have drop time. Drop time is the amount of time it takes the product to physically drain out of the bucket once the bucket opens. So I'll just put in a generic time there of a half second, or 0 0.6, 0 0.5 of a half second. Now, one thing you will see on all uh, VF100Es is the option for a cascade pan. That's because the software is the same on all models. In this case, because this only has one pan, one single primary pan, we will just ignore this cascade vibration. Okay, going back, we're gonna go into setup bucket. Here, if you're dealing with a very dusty product, you're going to wanna tear more often. Also, if you want more accuracy, you can tear more often. So your bucket tear rate, you can have all the way down to it, will tear every one cycle. So every time we do a fill, it will take three seconds to fill. Notice that if I go in here, the minimum I can set is three seconds for the bucket tear delay. That's because when the bucket closes, there's gonna be a slight uh, up and down motion on the scale. Um, so we need three seconds to make sure that scale is 100% stable before we tear, because you don't wanna get a high reading or a low reading on a tear. Also, we have bucket open time. This is the amount of time it'll take that bucket to open. So uh, I'm going to set this. Again, I'm not dealing with a very dusty product. Uh, I can set this to a high number all the way up to 30,000. So for this, I'm just gonna do every 50. And then gate control, which is not on this machine here, but would be a physical gate mounted to the machine that physically cuts off the flow of the product on the pan. So it'd physically be a mechanical gate that closed down and cut off the flow of product coming off the pan. This would be for uh, more flow, free flowing products that just wanna drip off of the, the pan as you're filling. <clears throat> if I hit back, that is literally how you set up a 100E. Um, we have another screen called scale. This is where we can do our scale calibration. Again, no reference units. So whatever you use here, if I used ounces, pounds, kilograms, whatever, would be the number I put in the calibrated weight. From there, you just hit uh, start cal and follow the bouncy ball. So it's gonna tell you everything you need to do on the screen once you hit the steps. Uh, we have our scale filtering and stability. So this is just showing us that our scale is very, very uh, stable at this point and in this environment. One thing you wanna make sure you are using a scale. So you don't wanna really be under AC vents or have a fan blowing on that. Uh, it will throw off your weights. Anytime you have air movement around the scale could potentially throw off your weights. Uh, and then the last function is our test menu. We have our test vibrator number one. Uh, so in this case, I can just physically test the vibrator and make sure it's functioning, make sure that the, the rates do change. If I started at 100% vibration, I can then go down to make sure it actually changes. Again, here we see a live reading of the scale, just to press on that and show you. Um, and then I can physically tear the scale here. Uh, stepper time. Um, on all machines, this is a, a function that really shouldn't be changed. Uh, it should be anywhere between 0.27 and 0.29. Um, it's not something that should be changed. That is the amount of time the stepper motor turns around to see the Hall effect sensor, which is actually seeing the stepper motor. Then we also have 
uh, bucket open and bucket closed. Again, to test that it actually functions. Okay. Going to here, test IO. If we were to have other machines hooked up to this for product requests, something that's gonna fill our main hopper, that's there. Or if we had this hooked up to another machine like a poucher or a um, bagger or a, a conveyor system, we have the ability to test our okay to dump and our end of fill signals. Also, if we had that vibratory gate here, that would be met again on the front of here, opening and closing, I could physically test that on this test menu. That is everything on the 100E. I'm going to run some product on this machine after I go through our Cascade machine. So now we're gonna go over the, the Cascade VF100E. What the Cascade pan allows you to do is draw out your product uh, further and get more accuracy. This is really good for products that uh, are very free flowing. As you can see, this is a very free flowing uh, peppercorn. So uh, coming out of e-stop, the only difference now with this machine is if I go into setup vibration, I now have the Cascade Vibe that will function. So for reference, this is your primary uh, vibrator and this is your Cascade. The reason being is we are cascading product onto your, vib your primary vibrator. So in this case, I always just, it's how I set up machines, is I'm always going to have my primary vibrator vibrate a little bit more than my cascade vibrator. And then I'm also going to always have a cascade on delay. So that means the primary pan's gonna move the product before the cascade starts vibrating. And then if you wanted an off delay to say time a large uh, pile of product that can push through this vibrator to get faster fill times, you can have a cascade vibration off delay set in. Anyway, that's everything going over a VF100E as far as the screens are concerned. Now we're going to go over uh, filling some products and setting up a recipe. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through how to set up a recipe and also to further get better accuracy out of your VF100E. So number one, I wanna select the recipe. I go into select menu and I select what recipe I wanna be on. In this case, number one. I'm gonna go into setup, set up target weight. Again, I can set up my target or product name to be whatever I want. I'll do test again on this machine, hit enter. Target weight is what your target weight is. It'll say it on the container or if you're filling by eye level, what that looks good to you at. Um, in this case, I'm gonna be filling to 17 um, units. I believe that is, is ounces in this case. Uh, I have a tolerance rate of 0 0.005, so a very high tolerance uh, uh, or low tolerance. I'm gonna open that up a little bit. Uh, and you can see that it automatically adjusts my, my low limit and my high limit. So anything under the low limit will be a red light on the screen. Anything over the high limit will be orange. If you're within your tolerance, it will be green on the screen. Uh, Preact, I'm gonna set to zero. Again, that's the pre-actual weight. That is the weight that is still falling once we hit our target weight at the scale. So I'm gonna set that to zero, and I'm just going to run a couple of uh, times with the settings that I already have in here at my bulk percentage of 80% and a bulk vibration rate of 60 and a dribble rate of 40. And just see what happens, see what kind of accuracy I get. So here we go. I'm gonna do one fill, hit start. It's gonna start filling. As you can see, my first and second timers are, are increasing, and this is taking a very long time. So these settings to me wouldn't be optimal for how I'm trying to run, but you can see that it is very accurate. So the longer the fill time, the lower amount of product you have on each pan, 
the better fill accuracy you're gonna get. So I'm gonna do a single cycle here. And so from here, you can see that our first fill, which is our time spent on the bulk fill, is set to uh, nine and a half seconds, and our dribble time was 16 seconds, which is telling me, which is telling me I can increase my dribble rate um, to get that time down. You really want, for the most accuracy, you want to see that dribble anywhere above two seconds. Um, so I'm gonna try to get that around the two second mark. Uh, so I'm gonna go into the setup menu. I'm gonna go into setup vibration, and I'm gonna change my bulk uh, percent of target to 90%. And my dribble vibration, uh, or bulk vibration, I'm gonna go up to 70%. And dribble vibration, I'm going to go to 45%. I'm just increasing the how much we're vibrating and then for how long we're spending on the bulk vibration. So I'm going to hit start for single cycle here. As soon as I do a fill, it will automatically start filling. As you can see, for this weight, we got uh, a bulk fill time of 12 seconds and our dribble is close to three seconds. It's, it's very good to me, it's accurate. If I get a consistent amount of fills here, a consistent weight, I can then dial in my uh, pre-act weight. Again, very similar weights. I'm gonna do about three weights to kind of take an average and set my pre-act. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, back down to about 0.2 again. I'm gonna set my pre-act weight to 0.1, just to show you what will happen um, on the next couple fills here. Now again, if I set my pre-act too high, I will get an underweight. That's the only way we'll get an underweight on the machine. So I'm gonna do one more fill. You can see it came down a bit from where we initially were. Again, I made a small change. I never make large changes on the machine. That way I always have something to go back to. Okay, as you can see, we're getting very close to our target weight and it is very accurate and reliable and consistent. So I'm just gonna go through how to maybe increase the speed of this fill. So I'm gonna go into setup, setup vibration, and change my bulk vibration. I'm just gonna go up to 80 uh, uh, vibration rate, and we'll see what that's set to. And I can use my foot switch here instead of using single cycle. Now this might throw off the, the accuracy of the machine, but I can reel that back in with the settings. Okay, as you can see, the accuracy really didn't suffer, so I'm gonna increase this even further. I'm just going to go up to 90% to make a large change. And see if I can get that bulk time down from 11 seconds.
Okay, still very accurate. The only other thing we could do is I can keep increasing the number or we could raise the gate up to allow for two layers of product on the pan. Right now it's a very uniform, even one layer. Um, but you get the gist of it and this is how you set up the VF100E. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at 610-524-7350 and ask for the service department and we'd be happy to help.